Several years ago, I was hit by a truck because I was running across the street when I didn't have the right of way. Before I knew what was happening, I had jumped up on the hood, slid across, and landed safely on the other side. The only thing that got run over was all the groceries I'd been carrying. It ended up being a funny story, but it could have ended very tragically. Sometimes it's a little inconvenient to obey the rules of the road, but these rules are designed to protect us. And so are the rules of nutrition. Green means go, yellow means slow, and red means no. Red light foods are foods that should be greatly minimized or avoided altogether. Brenda, what can you tell us about red light foods? Well, first of all, that was quite a story, Wes. I'm really glad that you were not hurt. Remember the analogy that when you have a disease like diabetes, it's kind of like your body is a house on fire. Green light foods are like the water on the fire. Red light foods are like the gasoline. These foods raise blood sugars, promote inflammation, raise cholesterol and triglycerides, promote weight gain, and significantly increase the risk of many different diseases. Ideally, red light food should be completely avoided, but if you do choose to eat them, please make sure it's on a very limited basis. The first red light food group is refined grains. When a kernel of wheat is refined to produce white flour, we remove almost everything of value to human health. Grains are made up of three main components, bran, germ, and endosperm. Refining removes two out of these three. The first is the bran, where most of the fiber is, and the second is the germ, which it really is the storehouse of nutrients for the kernel of wheat. What's left is the endosperm, otherwise known as starch. This process removes about 75% of the vitamins and minerals, 90% of the fiber, and 95% of the phytochemicals that the wheat kernel originally contained. But it doesn't stop there. Nobody sits down and eats a bowl of white flour. Before we eat the flour, we add fat, sugar, salt, flavors, preservatives, and colors to the flour, and then we eat it. We find refined grains in breads, bagels, cereals, pasta, cakes, cookies, pies, pastries, crackers, pretzels, and other baked goods. Sometimes nutrients are added back to the flour in a process called enrichment, but the end product is still missing the fiber, the phytochemicals, and many vitamins and minerals. So although enrichment is desirable, it's a very distant second choice to leaving the grain intact in the first place. That's why we've encouraged you to eat green light grains. But unfortunately, the average American eats about six servings of refined grains every day and less than one serving of whole grains. Close to 90% of our grain intake and 70% of our total calories comes from refined grains. Refined grains contribute to low-grade inflammation in the body. They're broken down to sugar, so once absorbed, their impact is similar. Refined grains are linked to increased abdominal fat, atherosclerosis, diabetes, and early mortality. Refined carbohydrates, including both starches and sugars, should be greatly minimized in the diet. Be sure to get the vast majority of your starches from green light grains and a smaller percentage from yellow light grains. If you do eat red light grains, be sure it's a very small amount, no more than one or two servings each day. Refined sugars, such as white sugar, brown sugar, syrups, jam, jelly, candy, and sweet drinks such as soda, are even more damaging to health than refined grains. Of course, many refined grain products have large amounts of sugar added. 
The average American eats about 30 teaspoons of sugar every day. This is about 480 calories or almost 25% of calories in a 2000 calorie diet. Close to half of this excess sugar comes from soft drinks. Much of the sugar comes from high fructose corn syrup, which is even more unhealthful than cane sugar or table sugar. Excess sugar consumption wrecks havoc in the body in multiple ways. It contributes to weight gain, high triglycerides, insulin resistance, and inflammation, which in turn increases the risk for many diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, and even cancer. The effects of fructose are even more pronounced than that of glucose. In fact, Fructose has been shown to increase the formation of advanced glycation end products eight times more than glucose. AGEs accelerate almost every disease process known to mankind and contribute to aging. It's so critical to minimize refined sweets and foods with added sugars. Of the 60,000 foods available in grocery stores, 80% of them are spiked with added sugar. That's another reason why it's so important to eat whole foods and to read the labels of the packaged foods you do eat. It's very natural to crave sweet foods, but nature provides them in much healthier forms. Your health will greatly benefit if you replace your usual sweets with whole fruit. Try making fruit smoothies or ice cream with frozen fruit like bananas and strawberries and a little nut milk in the blender. I replace sugar in almost all of my baking, including cookies, bars, muffins, and raw treats with dried fruits like dates and prunes and pears, which provide valuable nutrients and fiber. With a little practice, healthy sweets can become very satisfying. At 120 calories per tablespoon, oils are full of fat, but are very low in nutrients. Green light fats come from whole foods such as avocados, nuts, seeds, and olives. Yellow light fats come from extra virgin, cold pressed oils. They aren't as nutritious as high fat whole foods, but they have more vitamin E and phytochemicals than regular oils. Virgin cold-pressed oils are extracted physically without chemical manipulation. Non-virgin oils are refined even further and often undergo chemical treatment. Our grocery store shelves are filled with too many processed packaged foods to count. Processed foods make up 70% of the American diet, from frozen dinners to baking mixes, margarines, canned goods, chips, microwave popcorn, cookies, and many other snack foods. These foods meet us at every turn. But although they're popular and convenient, processed foods are loaded with empty calories. Many of them are full of chemicals and food toxins. Healthy foods, once processed, can do more harm than good. Packaged foods often contain trans fats, which increase the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and cancer, even more than saturated fats do. Trans fats are created by adding hydrogen to vegetable oils under pressure to turn them into solid fats. But research has found trans fats to be so dangerous that in 2008, New York City actually banned them from being served to the public. Thankfully, the FDA is now taking steps to ban trans fats completely. This simple change would prevent an estimated 20,000 heart attacks per year. But unfortunately, some trans fats are still available, so we need to take the initiative to ban them from our own diets. Make sure to read nutrition labels. Even if a product claims to be trans-free, this might not be true. Products with less than half a gram of trans per serving still qualify as being called trans-free. The best way to ensure a packaged food does not contain trans fats is to read the ingredient list. If you see the word shortening or partially hydrogenated oil, the food contains trans fat.
even if it says trans free. If you are eating out, there is no foolproof way to avoid trans fats. However, if you avoid deep fried foods and stick to healthy vegetarian options, you'll actually minimize your chances of getting any trans fats in your meal. Also ask for olive oil instead of margarine. Fried foods are loaded with fat, calories, and sodium. When we submerge our foods in pure fat, we triple the calories. For example, a large baked potato has about 220 calories. Turn it into French fries, and the same potato contains almost 700 calories, 480 of which are pure fat. It's not just the calories that are the issue. Many foods that are fried in cheap oils contain trans fats. Also, when oils hit their smoke point, very high temperatures, which often happens with deep frying, toxic byproducts or toxic compounds are formed that increase oxidative stress and contribute to disease processes. For anyone struggling with metabolic problems, these oils should be avoided completely. The next red light group is cheese and full fat dairy. While these foods are staples in the Western diet, they're loaded with fat, saturated fat, and cholesterol. High fat dairy products increase the risk of heart disease, diabetes, and many other illnesses. Conventional dairy products contain hormones that promote hormone-dependent cancers, such as breast, ovarian, and prostate cancer. Dairy sometimes contains traces of antibiotics, pesticides, and other toxins. Some research also suggests that dairy consumption may increase the risk of type 1 diabetes and other autoimmune diseases in some individuals. Although we've been taught to believe that dairy consumption is necessary for bone health, this is just simply untrue. It's true that dairy products are high in calcium, but that, that doesn't make them essential foods any more than it does moose milk or deer milk, which incidentally have about twice as much calcium as cow's milk. We get plenty of calcium from plant foods such as dark green leafy vegetables, tofu, legumes, and fortified plant-based products. You can also protect bone health by reducing the amount of sodium you eat, which will help prevent calcium loss, and also by getting regular exercise, which strengthens your bones. Don't let the dairy industry fool you. You don't need milk to be healthy or strong. If you do choose to use dairy, remember that yellow light, organic, fat-free, or low-fat products are better options than full-fat, non-organic products. Red meat, such as beef, lamb, pork, and veal, is high in saturated fat and cholesterol. Red meats dramatically increase the risk of many diseases, including diabetes, some forms of cancer, heart disease, and premature death. A National Institutes of Health study found that when people increased their usual red meat consumption by about half a serving per day, which is only the size of about a half a deck of cards, it's about an ounce and a half, they had 48% higher risk for developing diabetes in the following four years, while people who decreased their red meat consumption had a reduced risk. If you're just beginning your transition towards a more plant-based diet and you want a reasonable substitute, Try some of the amazing veggie meat replacements. Although they're high in sodium, they are much lower in fat, and they're also cholesterol-free. Processed meats such as wieners, salami, sausages, ham, bologna, bacon, spam are far worse than unprocessed red meats. According to the Nurses Health Study, which followed over 120,000 people for 28 years, eating just one serving of processed red meat a day was associated with a 20% increased risk of dying during the study. One serving is equal to one 
ounce of processed meat or a half an ounce of bacon. Not only are processed meats full of saturated fat and cholesterol, but they also have extremely high sodium levels and are often full of unhealthy chemicals that extend their shelf life. The American Institute for Cancer Research recommends that we limit red meat and completely avoid processed meat. And that concludes our discussion on red light foods. Remember, nutrition guidelines are designed to protect us. Healthy food is powerful medicine. The more you invest in quality nutrition, the more your health will thank you. So fill your plate with green light foods today.